What's up guys, welcome back for another live in the OU tier today. Now I know you were expecting a GPC match, but the GPC is actually on break for this week. We don't have any matches across the entire league. So what I decided to do was make a team inspired by our GPC team. I'm actually going to be nicknaming them as I explain them. So first we have Mega Gardevoir, pretty standard set, Hyper Voice, Psy Shock, Focus Blast, and Will-O-Wisp. Once again, Zapdos, standard set. You can see it's shiny right there. This is Tweety. Uh, and uh, we got Thunderbolt and Heat Wave. Obviously, no HP Ice on this, unfortunately, but Heat Wave does the job. Sometimes get bur it gets burned, so it's very nice. Then we have our Scarf, Mean Shao, Reckless, with High Jump, Kick, U Turn, Knock Off, and Stone Edge. This is my win condition in a lot of games uh, that I've come to realize, because uh, a lot of the team wears down Lando really quickly. So this, this pretty much comes in uh, very handy. Rob right here, uh, our male, should be male, uh, mean, mean Shao all the time. Uh, let's make Gardevoir female, and then we have Hippowdon over here, the, uh, what did we call this thing, Glorious? Glorious, the male Hippowdon with Earthquake, Stealth Rocks, this is our Rock Setter, Slack Off, and Stone Edge. One of my favorite Pokemon as of late, Klefki, we have Jumbled Mess, the Klefki with Spikes, Thunder Wave, Magnet Rise, and Play Rough, I can't really multitask, this one is, wasn't a good idea. And finally, we have GLG, our Entei with Sacred Fire, E-Speed, Stone Edge, and Bulldoze. A lot of standard sets, but sets that work, so let's try to find a battle real quick. I am pretty high on the ladder. I think I'm almost in the 1800s, so it might be a little bit difficult. Let's see where we are, actually. Um, Aster. Uh, we're 233rd on the ladder, so not bad at all. Uh, for anybody that's around this uh, point, congratulations, because it's actually very... It's not easy. Uh, I mean, like, there's a lot of seasoned players that can get up here. You have to be a very, very good player. Uh, to make it up into these ranks, even into the top 500. Uh, you just have to be solid. You have to constantly make plays uh, against your opponent. Now, right away, looking at my opponent's team, he's extremely weak to Mega Gardevoir. Outside of the priority that he has with Azumarill and um, Talonflame, it's very hard to kill. However, Talonflame and Azumarill in combination are going to be very hard for me to deal with as well. So, I feel like leading off with uh, Glorious is probably the best play. Uh, as Azumarill leads, so not not the best situation for us, not the worst. Uh, I'm just going to switch directly into Zapdos here. I don't know why we're lagging. Uh, this happened at the end of the last live that I recorded, but uh, he does seem to be banded. Uh, I could easily just roost up here. Uh, I'm probably going to take another waterfall right here, which is absolutely fine. I'm just going to keep roosting though, uh, because I expect him to switch out into Titar at some point, not wanting to take a Thunderbolt or even into Manectric. Uh, Kyurem actually decides to come out, so that's not too bad. Uh, now what I want to do is, uh, I'm, I'm kind of afraid of a, an Earth Power right here on Klefki, so I kind of want to go into on first to scout for that, but if he actually does go for Ice Beam, then I'm in a very bad position. So I think just going into Klefki is always the play, as my opponent is just going to straight up Earth Power. That's almost going to knock us out, and I'm assuming he's choiced in some way, so what I'm actually going to do is just uh, throw up a Spike. Uh, having him expect the Magnet Rise and wanting to switch out here. Maybe into Skarmory, potentially, could be the play. Uh, let's see, he just goes for another Earth Power, so great play. Uh, but now I get to go out into Rob here, our Scarfed Mean Shao, and just, th uh, just throw out a High Jump Kick, honestly. I think that's... Uh, I could also throw out a Stone Edge, but I think High Jump Kick's the best play. We are adamant as well, so it's going to do a good chunk to the Skarmory. It's reckless. I uh, would take Rocky Helmet. But uh, now he has to deal with my Zapdos coming back in. So if he wants to defog, that's a good play, I guess. Um, he does just throw up his rocks, actually. So, all right, we're going to be able to throw out either a Thunderbolt or a Heat Wave here. I'm just going to go for the Heat Wave uh, as Kirim comes in. So that's going to do a little bit more than Thunderbolt would have. Uh, we also have the potential to burn right here, which we do, actually. Wow, okay. It's a little bit lucky. Um, I'm expecting him to be Specs because that Earth Power did a lot of damage to us. I don't have a good Ice Beam switch in though, so I think, do I need to keep Entei? That is the question. Not really, he has a T-Tar and a, an Azumarill, so I think I can switch directly into Entei here. It's going to hurt, don't get me wrong, the Ice Beam is definitely going to hurt, but there's nothing I can really do about that. Uh, if he is modest, we are faster, so that's something, excuse me, that's something to note. And uh, I don't, this one doesn't look too great, but we still have Gardevoir in the back, which outspeeds everything, so that's nice. As long as we keep Zapdos, Hippowdon, and uh, Gardevoir alive, we should be good to go. He's going to Ice Beam us for 40%, so that definitely confirms specs. Now, I can calc that to see if he's actually modest specs. So if we enter a standard Entei set, Choice Banded versus Kirim, Choice Specs, 
we see that Ice Beam does 33 to 44 at Timid Nature, so he doesn't need to be uh, modest to do that to us. I'm actually just going to Sacred Fire here because I expect Skarmory to come out. There we go. Beautiful able to knock that out. Now, we only have one more Rock Switch in, so we have to be very careful. However, his Kyurem is now on a timer, thanks to the burn. That was very lucky of us to get. Um, he does outspeed us right now, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, well, no, he specs, right? We calculated that he specs, which means that Mean Chao always outspeeds him. And now he doesn't have a very good uh, switch into uh, high jump kicks. So I'm actually just going to throw out another Sacred Fire here. My opponent is Scarfed, as confirmed by that. And I think just going into Hippowdon here and throwing up rocks is probably my best play because his Defogger is gone. Whereas ours is still alive, as that is exactly what we are going to do. Azumarill comes back in, so this means that Kirim is gone. We don't need to deal with that thing anymore. And I don't think Waterfall straight knocks me out, uh, even from Banded. So I'm just going to Earthquake here, as it does not knock us out, and we do not flinch. So his Azumarill is also going to be dead to Stealth Rocks and Spike from this point on. So very nice. Uh, so this doesn't switch back in, neither does Kirim. His uh, Talon Flame takes a ton when coming back in. So I might actually want to keep this. I'm not sure. Uh, unless it's Banded Talonflame, I think I'm okay with Zapdos. Yeah, I'm just gonna Earthquake again. He's just gonna Waterfall, that's fine. I'm just gonna go into, uh... I'm gonna Gardevoir is actually my play. That way, I can fire off a Hyper Voice and he can't switch out. Because if I go into Zapdos, he can just go into Titar, right? So... I'm thinking... The problem is his Titar always comes in. So maybe... Yeah, I think actually going into Rob is the play. Going into our Mean Shao. And I think that knockoff kills uh, Azumarill from here. I could be wrong, but let's check Mean Shao and make an Adamant on the Choice Scarf set. Uh, Adamant knockoff does 17 to 20, so he's just in range. 17.7, yeah, I'm just going to click it. It's fine. We'll be able to knock out the Azumarill from here, which is nice. And we are Choice Scarfed, which means we do outspeed the Manectric before Mega Evolution. We outspeed the T-Tar, which I think is the clutch factor here. Uh, does Reckless High Jump King... Can Talonflame even switch on on me is, is my question. Let's say it's an offensive Swords Dance set. No, it can't. Okay, good. Uh, he is going to bring in his Talonflame right away. And I'm just going to go hard into Zapdos, because if he attacks us right here, he'll be below Stealth Rock switching, uh, which he does, and he does 20% to us. However, he can no longer switch in. And I think Rob just cleans up this game. So we'll just go for Thunderbolt. He's going to go for Sword Stance. That's absolutely fine. We're able to knock out the Talon Flame. And like I said, Mean Shao just cleans up now. As long as we hit the high jump kicks, that's what we need to do. We absolutely need to hit these high jump kicks. He's going to go into Titar, risking the miss on the Stone Edge, I would assume. As that is exactly what he's going to go for. But we are also Scarfed. And this is a very easy... Oh, wait. Hold on a second. He has a Kyurem that he can still sack. Okay. So this just became a little more complicated. I know I don't take uh, crash damage if he sacks something. So I'm going to click high jump kick. We're going to be able to knock out the T-Tar right there. Kyurem is dead. It does not switch in on rocks and spike. And all he has left is the Manek trick. I'm just going to click high jump kick. He is going to get the Intimidate right here, but it still should kill as it does. There we go. Beautiful. And that is going to be game one done. So a much faster game one than what we're used to these past couple of lives. Let's see if we can get a couple more like that. If we can finish off at about 20 minutes, that would be very nice. And uh, it's looking to go that way so far. So it's a pretty good team. I mean, you can make a team out of any six Pokemon, really, as long as they're decently competitive. As long as you know what you're doing with the team. That's really all it takes. Just play solid, play for your win condition. Like I said before we even started with the first match, uh, mean Chao is my win condition in a lot of scenarios because of that fast choice scarf, uh, that powerful high jump kick. It's going to be a little more difficult against a team like this because uh, there is a Mew, there is a Sylveon, there's also a defensive Garchomp potentially. So Mean Chao is not looking too great, but Gardevoir is. So keep that in mind. Um, I don't like leading Gardevoir when there's a Metacham on the other side. As much pressure as it puts on my opponent's team, I think the best overall lead is definitely Hippowdon. Uh, if he leads with Rotom, then so be it. But he does lead with Garchomp, which is very nice. We'll both be able to uh, trade rocks right here. We'll just go for Stealth Rocks. His rocker might also be Mew, actually, now that I'm looking at it. Uh, but it is this Garchomp. Okay, good. That's good news. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to Stone Edge here, uh, expecting the Rotom to want to come in. I want a at least a little bit of damage on that thing before it gets to switch back out. 
as he goes into Heatran, surprisingly, okay, uh, as that thing's on a balloon, so that's nice, we're able to pop its balloon, we're gonna force a switch out here uh, with Earthquake, and if Heatran doesn't actually get to do anything, that's awesome. Uh, if he goes into Rotom at this point, I don't really care, but he actually chooses to go into Sylveon and take Earthquake damage, alright, cool, that's fine by me once again. Um, he has leftovers as well, which means we're pretty free to Earthquake right here. Uh, as he goes for a Yawn, which is nice. We're gonna keep this, uh, Sylveon- actually, we're gonna knock it out with Sand. Wow! Okay, so we get a knockout turn- what is it, turn four? Awesome, and Heatran's weakened, we have Stealth Rocks up, and we've taken no damage on our team, so this is really good. My opponent wanted to overpredict a little bit. Uh, we are drowsy, so I'm not staying in here, I'm going hard into, uh, Klefki right here. If he high jump kicks, then he high jump kicks, there's nothing I can really do about it. Uh, as he does just go for the high jump kick. That is gonna knock us out. I'm curious to see if it matters if he's adamant or uh, jolly. Well, let's see. All out attacker versus Klefki. Our standard spike set. Uh, it does not matter if he's jolly or adamant. So, that's gonna be a little bit more difficult to deal with. Um, yeah, definitely difficult. What I kind of want to do is go out into uh, Hippo and expect him to switch out into Rotom and double into Gardevoir. But I don't think that's the play. Uh, if anything, just going into Mean Chow here and U-turning is my play. He does resist my stab. He should know that there's no move I can click that would knock him out normally. So he might want to stay in here. Um, which would lose me some momentum, unfortunately. But it does put him in range of E-speed from, our, uh, from uh, I was about to say Arcanine, from Entei. So that's nice. Uh, also, as he trying his weekend, it comes in on rocks. It can't take too many E-speeds. Uh, Rotom and Garchomp are the real ones that can take uh, hits. Even Mew, of course. He's got a very defensive side. He does take 41% from that U-turn. Very nice. We'll go straight out into Hippowdon, uh, because everything else knocks out the Heatran at this point. It doesn't really matter. He's going to go for high jump kick. Now I can gauge the damage. Hold on. 68%. Uh, Hippowdon. Mixed wall. Uh, unless he got a super high roll... I think he's adamant. I think he's adamant, which means that Gardevoir can outspeed this. So that's very nice to know. Um, he'll be in range of another U-turn if math serves correctly. Uh, after the, um, he goes for he reveals Ice Punch, which he probably shouldn't have done because now I think that he might not have Bullet Punch. Uh, so I'm just gonna go back into Rob. Hopefully we get the same roll with U-turn. Alternatively, Knock Off is not a terrible play. Uh, but U-turn is stronger right now because of the um, because of the uh, the fact that we can't knock off his item. So I actually just want to see something. Does high jump kick knock this thing out? I think it does. Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. So we'll click high jump kick here. Uh, if he wants to switch into Mew, that's fine. If he wants to go into Rotom on the U-turn, that's fine as well. Uh, I think he might want to keep this Metacham because it still beats like three of my members, especially if he has Bullet Punch. But we'll see. Uh, as he does switch out into Heatran, that's awesome. We're going to get a kill on the Heatran right there. And uh, if he wants to go into Metacham, I will stay in to take the fake out. And we will high jump kick again. So, he's going to go to Mew. Alright, cool play. Uh, except I have a fire type that you can't burn. So unless you're a toxic variant, I'm not too concerned. And if he wants to double into Metacham, that's fine. That's taking an extra turn of sand and rocks for me. So, not bad at all. Also, we know that his Garchomp is more than likely defensive. Uh, from the fact that it was a Stealth Rock variant, so. Just gonna go into uh, GLG here. As Garchomp comes in, this is a great way to test to see if this thing is actually offensive or defensive. We're gonna, just gonna fire off a Sacred Fire right here. If he goes for Earthquake, then uh, and he outspeeds us, then that's uh, that's a good indicator that he, uh, that he is offensive, of course, because he'll outspeed us, so he'll be more than 300 speed, which means that Gardevoir will then not be able to outspeed this Garchomp. We're gonna have to deal with it another way, which is, in fact, the case. He is a Life Orb variant. Uh, his Mew is sitting at 88%. How much does Mew take from a High Jump Kick from an Adamant? Uh, it actually takes quite a bit. It takes quite a bit from an Adamant High Jump Kick from Mean Xiao. After rocks, the fact that I didn't see leftovers actually also really helps. Uh, I'm just gonna go into uh, Mean Xiao here. Now I'm pretty sure his uh, his Metacham is adamant, which means that I think that Gardevoir can clean up this game as long as I play this correctly. So I'm just gonna go for the high jump kick right here. Mew is gonna come out. It's gonna take a lot of damage from this high jump kick, as you can see, 28%. I think that was a low roll. Okay, so he does have leftovers. All right, I don't I don't know what I was thinking, but 
Um, he's probably just gonna heal up here, so I'm gonna double back into uh, Gardevoir at this point. I might be putting myself into Bullet Punch range, which would be very unfortunate. Uh, but my opponent is just gonna Roost, which is very nice. I think two Hyper Voices from here actually knocks this thing out. So we'll just go for that. And uh, if he wants to attack, uh, attack us, that's absolutely fine. We're just going to... Sorry, I dropped something here. I'm trying to pick it up. Uh, we're just going to uh, have to take the status, and that'll be that. He's actually going to sack his Metacham. Wow. All right, I will take that. I will take that any day of the week. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, th what this means is that now we get to... Uh, he roosted with me, right? Okay, cool. Now what this means is uh, every time Gardevoir comes in, I don't need to fear switching out except on this Garchomp. So I'm going to go into Tweety here on the Earthquake, which is the only thing that would knock me out. Maybe a Poison Jab if he has it, but he's already revealed Rocks. I'm expecting Rock Coverage plus Earthquake and Dragon Move, either Dragon Claw or Outrage. He might just click Outrage here, but that would be a very bad play because if he actually manages to crit my Zapdos and knock it out, he loses his Garchomp and I think he loses the game at that point. Uh, but he does just go for Earthquake, that's a good play. He might be fearing the HP Ice here. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is throw out a Thunderbolt. He's actually just going to Outrage, please crit me. Please get 3 turn conf uh, three turn Outrage, please. Come on. Give me the 3 turn. That's all I want to see. Don't get confused. Come on. Ah, uh, really? That sucks, man. Alright, well we're going into uh, Gardevoir. If he risks this, and he lets his Garchomp go down, he might just lose the game, so I'm gonna throw out a Hyper Voice. I think he should sack Rotom here as his play. If we got the three turn uh, Outrage, we would have been able to knock out this Garchomp right here, but he does just sack Rotom, that's a very good play. And now he'll be able to go back into Garchomp, be able to click Earthquake, which will definitely knock me out if it's Offensive Life Orb. And then we have no way of taking out the, uh, the Garchomp and the Mew, so. Unless this would be able to live a, an Earthquake, but I think this has even less defense than Gardevoir. Yeah, it does. Does that actually knock me out? Hold on. Garchomp, offensive. We're going to find out anyway, but I just want to calc it for future reference. Guard of War. Mega Guard. Wall Breaker. Uh, Earthquake does 81 to 96, and that's with a little bit of HP investment. So it doesn't knock us out from full. So that's a good thing to know for the future. He is just going to go for Earthquake right there. And I think I need two crit knockoffs to be able to win this game. What's his Mew sitting at? Full? Yeah, even at that, I don't think... Mew, well, hold on, Garchomp, do you die to Mean Shao's knockoff? Choice Scarf, Adamant, knockoff, does 33 to 38, so let's go for the crit. See if we can get it. We do not. We're going to take Rough Skin, and this uh, this Outrage is easy, easily going to be able to take us out, and that's going to be GG to my opponent, and uh, we will move on to the next game. Like I said, I wanted to keep this short. We should be finishing it up at about 22 to 23 minutes, so that's not too bad. Hopefully, we can get another win with this team. Inspired by our GPC team that Rob handed us oh so nicely. But my opponent has a lot of things that I counter very well. So I think we should be okay. Um, everybody's led with Azumarill against me on my Hippo. So what I'm actually going to do is lead off with um, Zapdos this game. Because it matches up well against the Metagross. Uh, against the Landorus potentially. He doesn't know that yet. It matches up well against the Azumarill and the, Magna uh, the Magnazone. So... I like that. He's gonna lead off with his uh, with his Landorus. We're just gonna fire off a Heat Wave right here as my opponent decides to switch directly into Magnazone. Very nice. Gonna eat up an Oka Berry. All right. So we know we're more than likely faster than this thing. I'm just gonna go for another Heat Wave right here. Uh, anything that he switches into, I have a counter to, so it's not a big deal. Just gonna go into Latios. Like I said, I do have a counter to this being Klefki. Easy switch for me. As he's just going to go for a Surf, that's fine. That did quite a bit of damage, actually. I think that's Specs. Hold on. Uh, Latios. Life Orb Attacker versus Klefki, Standard. Uh, surf. Give me Surf. I'm pretty sure that's Specs. I, I don't even know why I'm calculating this, to be honest with you. Yeah, 31 to 37 from uh, Life Orb variant, so this is definitely Specs. Um, what can I do about that? I could switch back into... No, I'm going to take that even worse, right? Well, not necessarily. I have a lot more HP on uh, on Zapdos, so maybe I won't take that as bad. How much HP did I lose there? Something like one, 140? So I'd lose about 180 on Zapdos? Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I think I'd rather just Thunder Wave here, as my opponent's going to switch out into Landorus, so good play. Um, I just want to set up a spike. I don't expect him to Earthquake, knowing that Klefki can get Magnet Rise. 
as he does just go for stealth rocks awesome now we're gonna magnet rise uh, in front of this Lando as he does go for swords dance Ooh, okay all right I see you um, I'm not too worried about it uh, I'll just go for play rough right here as he goes for another swords dance maybe I should be worried about this thing I'm not sure uh, he is Rocky helmet swords dance okay cool uh, we'll just keep going for play rough. I mean, we don't lose much. He goes for a stone edge that does way too much damage, and the rocky helmet damage is gonna knock us out right there. However, uh, I don't believe he's faster. Let's just calc minus one play rough from Klefki onto a defensive Landorus T. Uh, after the intimidate, play rough would be doing a lot less, so he's not defensive. Ooh, that's not a good time. So if he's not defensive. If he's an offensive Landor Landorus T with Rocky Helmet, uh, which makes sense with the play rough damage. Let's see how much Mean Shao does to this thing. Choice Scarf. I might have to lose two Mons to this. Uh, Choice Scarf Adamant with Knockoff does 24 to 29. What? Uh, take off this HP investment. Make it max speed. I'm expecting him to be max speed. So he hits 281. Uh, if he's Adamant... Oh, hold on a second. We can calc something. Let's go plus four. Uh, against Klefki with a Stone Edge. Klefki with a Stone Edge, 65 to 77. How much did he actually do to us? 63. So he's not adamant. I think he's Jolly in that case. Uh, Jolly would make sense for the Calc. Yes. Okay. So he's probably Jolly, which means he hits 309. Uh, we know that his, that our Mean Shao is the only thing that's faster than this thing at the moment. Uh, doing very little to it. Wait, that's with an Intimidate. Take off this Intimidate. Um, knockoff doing a good amount. High Jump Kick doing a good amount. Actually, after a U-turn, he might go down to a High Jump Kick. I'm going to need two mid-rolls. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to go into uh, Mean Shao right here. We're going to go for the U-turn. And... Yeah, okay, we're going to have to sack two Pokemon, I think. So it's going to be uh, a little bit of damage there. Puts him to 47, which means we need a higher roll on high jump kick, unfortunately. Actually, how much did that U-turn do? 15? Uh, yeah, that's about right. Actually, that's a high roll on U-turn, too. All right, so uh, we'll go into Tweety. Do I need Zapdos? I definitely need Zapdos this game. I really needed uh, Klefki as well, but there was nothing I can switch out into there. We'll just go into uh, Hippowdon, I think, is my play. And we'll attempt to get up rocks, which we shouldn't be able to in theory. He, yeah, he's just going to knock us straight out with the Earthquake. And E-Speed doesn't kill either, right? There's no way. Entei, Choice Band. Extreme Speed does 45 to 53. Actually, it's a higher chance to kill than anything I can hit him with with uh, Mean Shao. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go for the E-Speed. We're going to attempt to knock this thing out, as we do. Awesome. Okay, so we're able to get rid of his Lando. Whew! Okay, huge threat averted, uh, but I'm down a few Pokemon now. This is not looking very good. We know that the Latios is Choice Specs, so that's good information. Uh, he goes into his Metagross. All right. Uh, do I just E-Speed this? Actually, E-Speed is a nice thing to keep since he's Choice Latios. He has an Azumarill. Uh, I think he has a weakened Magnezone. I can't even see the percentages right now. Uh, yeah, he ate an Alkaberry. Alka okay. Uh, so we're going to go hard into Tweety. Hopefully he doesn't fire off anything stupid, like uh, an Ice Punch. That would suck. We always have uh, Mean Chow in the back, though, so it's not too bad. We'll just go for a high jump kick and we'll knock something out. Pretty much guaranteed. Uh, mean Chow looking like our win con again, actually. If As long as we keep Mean Chow and Zapdos with a couple of sacks, we should be okay. So, in fact, maybe I just want to E-Speed here. Let's see. How much does Mega Metagross take from Mean Chow's uh, Choice Scarf? Adamant, high jump kick, 63. So potentially after an E speed, I'll kill it. Yeah, I might be able to here. Uh, 72, oof, not enough, not enough. Uh, well, it might be enough, but it's it's really close. I think I just have to go for it though. I don't have another play. We went for Zen Head, but uh, that's not gonna be able to knock out Zapdos. But I need Zapdos, you know. So I think I need to go off this roll here. It's a very, very high roll that I need. Um, yeah, 383 attack. Everything looks right. There's nothing I can really do, huh? Except high jump kick. Well, hold on. Let me think about this. 
What do I do after? I just go into Zapdos anyway, right? Uh, yeah, I need to play off the roll. That's my only way to win. I need to go for the roll right here. He could also miss if he's only got inaccurate moves, which would be awesome. Uh, I'm not banking on it, but, I mean, we need the roll. That's our only way to win right here, is if we get this roll on this, uh, on this Metagross. And then we still have to play around with Latios. That's going to be an issue, as well as Hydreigon. If that thing is Scarf, then, oh, wait a minute, he just switched. What? Okay, I'll take it. Uh, that's going to do 46% to this thing. It is Citrus as well, so he's a Belly Drum variant. He's not going to Belly Drum right here, he's just going to attack. So I'm going to go into uh, into Zapdos. If he actually Belly Drums, that's that's a crazy play. Because he'll be at like 11%. He'll actually win the game right away. But yeah, okay, I didn't expect him to. Um, now the problem is, if I do Roost, do I die to plus 6 Aqua Jet? Let's find out. Azumarill. Azumarill, uh, Belly Drum, Aqua Jet, plus six. No, I won't. I won't after the Roost plus leftovers, but I'll be extremely weakened. I'm just gonna throw out a T-Bolt. I'm just gonna knock this thing out. Get rid of it. All right. So now, his by switching out his Metagross, what he did was that he put it into Mean Xiao's uh, range of high jump kick. So I don't know if he knew that, but he was better off staying in. Because now that thing comes in at 60. So with an Adam and High Jump Kick, as you guys can see, it does min 63. Wait, it's not a roll anymore. It's actually in our favor. Now, I cannot switch out directly into Gardevoir, unfortunately, uh, right here. So I'm going to have to attempt. Um, what I can also do is attempt to defog, but I don't think that serves any purpose. I think I'd much rather the spike up. Yeah, I need the spike up. going to go for a Roost. He's going to Dark Pulse, and he's not going to flinch us. He's going to fail to knock us out, which is actually really interesting. Um, now, that's not Specs damage, right? It shouldn't be. Uh, Life Orb to... What is this thing? Zapdos. Standard Physically Defensive. Dark Pulse from a Life Orb variant does a lot more than that. So, I'm just going to keep attempting to Roost. Uh, I, I want to see how much this Dark Pulse actually does to Mean Xiao. Like, without the Life Orb. Make it Timid. Because I'm assuming he's Timid Scarf. Uh, let's move this out of the way. Where's Timid? Timid versus Mean Xiao. I want to know if I can switch it in. 35 to 41. Nope. Cannot switch it in. We're going to go for a Roost one more time. As he's going to choose to go out into Latios. Okay, cool. So now what we can do is Roost again right here. If he wants to go for Surf, that's fine. It's not going to be doing too much. Like, that was a Stab Dark Pulse coming from a Hydreigon. So this thing isn't going to do too much more to me. Unless he actually drops a Draco, then he will. But then I just get a Hyper Voice off. Or I can even go for uh, for a Will-O-Wisp to cripple the Metagross. Which I think might be my play. Let's see what he does. Uh, I'm assuming either a Psy Shock or a Draco Meteor is coming here. But I can't really switch out on either of those. I could switch out on a Draco Meteor, but I can't be guaranteed that that's what he'll go for. Then again, I think Zapdos is a little more valuable to me. Because it's, it's able to... I wish I had more sacks right now. That Lando definitely put in a lot of work on me. I'm going to have to switch out into Gardevoir directly, unfortunately. As he is going to go for the Draco Meteor. Okay, cool. So we get that one. All right, and now we can freely Will-O-Wisp. As Magnazone is actually going to come out. We already saw the Oka Berry on this thing. Uh, which means that we know for a fact that it doesn't have any way to... Uh, to outspeed us. It's not a Choice Scarf variant. Uh, Hyper Voice might actually even knock it out from here. I'm just going to check that. Uh, Magnazone, let's say, was Choice Specs versus... Uh, which actually runs HP. Versus Gardevoir. Uh, I don't... I don't know. 38 to 44. It's very close. That's with a lot of HP, though. So if we tone that down to zero, it's definitely knocking him out from here. And, I mean, Metagross comes in after anyway, so I might as well Hyper Voice. Uh, as we do knock out the Magnazone, which is awesome. Metagross is going to come back in here for sure. And I'm assuming it's just going to go for Steel Move. Uh, now, the thing is, I can, pre I can prevent him from spamming Dragon Moves against me by keeping this. And we already know that High Jump Kick knocks this thing out from here. So, I think I switch into Zapdos here every time. We resist the Steel Move, if that's what's coming. Uh, as he just goes for Zen Headbutt, does he not have a Steel-type move? 
Because that would have definitely not knocked me out. That's very weird that he went for that. Alright, we'll go for a heat wave here. He is just going to hit us with another Zen headbutt. Now we go into Mean Shao. We fire off a high jump kick here. And I think that's how we win. As long as this high dragon doesn't have flash cannon. And even if it does, I don't think it knocks out. Um, yeah, it probably doesn't knock it out. Gardevoir. Uh, Dark Pulse does a lot. Flash cannon. Does 61 to 72. So no, it does not knock us out. But it'll put us in range of another attack. So I'm actually considering going for a knockoff right here. Crit. Oh, I know this is a long end game, guys. I'm sorry, but I want to win. I definitely want to win this game. Uh, crit knockoff potentially doesn't even knock it out. So I think the play is always high jump kick for sure. Let's see what our opponent chooses to do. He might stay in. I'm assuming he's going to stay in. It doesn't make much sense to switch. Um, Hold on a second. Is there a way I can still win this? If only I had a fairy type move on Mean Shao. <laughs> I'd be able to knock out the remaining two by switching out after. If he switches into Latios right here, that is a huge, huge, huge mistake. Because... Okay, he just stays in. Okay. If he would have switched into Latios right there, that would have been a huge error on his part. Uh, because he would not have been able to take two high jump kicks, I don't believe. Do we have a chance to knock this thing out? We do with a crit. Uh, a crit adamant high jump kick does 81 to 96 how much does u-turn do 65 to 77 and how much does it do high dragon high dragon uh, choice scarf 53 to 65 so what am I better off doing playing off the crit now we're switching out hmm well, it all depends. How much does Psy Shock do to me? To... Like, let's say he's Choice Specs. Versus uh, Gardevoir. I just want to see this. Gardevoir, Mega Gardevoir. Uh... Wait, what? That's not it. <laughs> Gardevoir, Mega Wall Breaker. Psy Shock does 49 to 57, so I can't even switch in on that. I have to go for High Jump Kick. As we're not going to get the crit, and he is just going to go for Psy Shock. And I think Psy Shock into... Uh, yeah, it'll definitely take me out. Psy Shock into Dark Pulse will be able to knock us out. As you can see, that does 50%. And I do believe he is Scarfed High Dragon, so this is going to be GG. And there it is. So, very unfortunate there. Uh, we almost pulled it back. Uh, we just needed to... If, had I stayed in on his Metagross right there and knocked it out with Gardevoir, that could have been a completely different game. Because then he would have had to play around with when to Draco and when not to Draco against my Zapdos. So, uh, a little bit unfortunate. We do get two losses, but we are still in the 1700s. So, it's uh, it's not too bad. Plus, it was a team inspired by uh, my team in the GPC, which obviously League teams do not function the same way as... Uh, regular OU team, so that's a lesson learned. Do not bring your league team to OU. It more than likely won't work out unless you have a really, like, insane team. So, that's pretty much it, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure to drop a like down below for me. Subscribe if you have not done so already, and I will see you guys later. Ciao.